In this video, we're going to look at an example where we have to apply the order of operations um, to an expression involving lots of fractions. Um, so just as a quick reminder, um, we always do parentheses or any kind of grouping symbol first. Then after that, we take care of exponents. Then multiplication and division are our next priority. And remember, in case of a tie, you move left to right. And uh, same thing with addition and subtraction. Uh, that's the fourth priority, those two. And if you have a tie, you move left to right. So we understand first we need to start um, within the parentheses and uh, simplify everything that's there. Now, we learned back in section 3.5 how to subtract mixed numbers and leave them as mixed numbers. And if all you have to do is subtract two mixed numbers, in a problem, then you should leave them as mixed numbers. However, let's understand that when I take 5 and 3 eighths minus 3 and a half, after I'm done, I'm going to end up multiplying that by a fraction, right? Because you can see we're multiplying by 2 thirds squared. So since I'm eventually going to have to multiply anyway, we might as well just turn both of these improper right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So 5 times 8 is 40, plus 3 is 43. And then 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So I'm subtracting off 7 halves. I'm rewriting everything that I'm not changing. And I'm not going to do anything to 7 twelfths and 5 eighths quite yet, not until the next step. So we've just rewritten this so that my mixed numbers became improper fractions. All right, so now let's work on the subtraction we have to do over, the, over here in this set of parentheses. So we understand the least common denominator is 8, because 2 goes into 8 evenly. So I'll multiply the top and the bottom of 7 halves by 4. Um, and then moving over to the other set of parentheses where we have to add fractions, Understand that the LCD of these uh, fractions is 24. Because 8 does not go into 12, but then uh, 12 goes into 24 and so does 8. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 2 and the top and bottom of 5 eighths by 3. So I'll, again, I'll rewrite everything I haven't changed in the next step. So 43 eighths minus 28 eighths times 2 thirds squared minus in parentheses 14 24ths plus 15 24ths. So now I can actually perform the subtraction and addition in my two sets of parentheses. So 43 minus 28 is going to give me 15, so I have 15 eighths. Still rewriting the times 2 thirds squared, even though I haven't done anything with it yet. Minus 14 plus 15 is 29, so minus 29 twenty fourths. Okay, so we've taken care of everything that was in parentheses. Now we go to the next thing in the list, which is exponents. So I need to evaluate this exponent. So remember, 2 thirds squared means 2 thirds times 2 thirds. So if I have 2 thirds times 2 thirds, that's 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, so now uh, we've taken care of the exponent, so now we move on to multiplication and division. So there's no division, but there is multiplication right here, and we know that when we multiply two fractions, we want to pre-reduce if possible. So I can see that I can take 8 divided by 4 to make 2, and 4 divided by 4 to make 1. I can take 15 divided by 3 to make 5, and 9 divided by 3 to make 3. And so when I actually multiply those fractions, I'm going to continue this right over here, I'm going to have 5, 6, 
and then I'm rewriting the minus 29 twenty fourths that I didn't touch in that last step. So now the only thing left to do is subtract these fractions. I need a common denominator and we can see that our least common denominator here is 24. So we can leave this fraction alone, but I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom of 5, 6 by 4. So we get 20 20 fourths minus 29 20 fourths. Now here's a situation where we have a smaller fraction minus a larger positive fraction, and so I think it would be good to turn this into plus the opposite. And so we know the way we carry this out is to subtract the two absolute values, so 29 minus 20 is 9, but of course the, uh, the negative is on the bigger absolute value, so negative wins. So I end up with negative 9 20 fourths. And then after all this hard work, it would be tempting to just stop right here, but understand that 9 and 24 do have a common factor, so don't forget to check that at the very end of a problem. And we know that 3 goes into both of those. So I'm going to divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3. And so what I end up with for an answer is negative 3 eighths.